Welcome back to the Snowpoint Cast. Today we're going to be looking at a deck from Majestic Dawn to Call of Legends uh, BLG, also known as uh, Blazegun Luxray Garchomp. So kind of just the Luxray uh, SP variant of this format. So let's get right into it. Starting off with two Garchomp. This is going to be one of your main attackers in the deck. Garchomp is a super solid guard. Uh, 80 HP, single retreat, weakness uh, to colorless times two. Claw swipe for a double colorless does 30. Or uh, for a single energy and an energy gain, which is actually really good because this is a donk attack. Um, there are a couple of Pokemon in the format that this knocks out. Magikarp and Unknown Q being a couple of them. Uh, and then Earthquake is also a really useful attack in the mirror match. So being able to do 100 because uh, guard jumps are colorless weak. Plus a Crobat ping means you can knock out a level X with a basic, uh, which is really, really solid because you can just go double colorless energy, energy gain, Crobat, unless it gets power sprayed, um, you're going to be knocking out the opposing level X guard jump, which is really good if you uh, are facing one down in the mirror. Okay, so you also play two Garchomp C level X. Uh, so 110 HP, free retreat, which is amazing, and then keeps that colorless weakness. Uh, so healing breath, once during your turn, when you put Garchomp C level X from your hand uh, onto your active Garchomp C, you may remove all damage counters from each of your Pokemon SP. So this is obviously a really amazing ability. Just being able to heal all your Pokemon SP um, lets you take a bunch of hits and then move around and then heal it later if that's what you need, or take even just one hit, and healing off one hit with a healing breath is still super useful. Uh, and then Dragon Rush is the attack on Garchomp, also a really solid part of this card. So for three colorless or a double colorless and an energy gain, uh, discard two energy attached to Garchomp. So you choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. This attack does 80 to that Pokemon. Then Garchomp can't use Dragon Rush during your next turn. So being able to snipe 80 to finish something off or take something out that's like a support Pokemon is uh, also really, really nice. Or it can just steal a game as well. At the end of the game, you know, if your opponent has an Uxie or an Azelf on their bench, you can just kill it and not have to worry about their active. This is playing a Luxray Lion, so you... Playing two Luxray, 80 HP, Lightning type, uh, Bite for two also does 30, so it's another uh, potential donk on the Magikarp and Unknown that I was talking about before. Um, and then Trash Bolt for Lightning, Double Colorless does 70, discard an energy card from your hand, and then if you can't, this attack does nothing. So this attack is actually really useful against Gyarados, because Gyarados has 130 HP, and then with a Lucario GL, which we're going to get into in just a sec, um, it makes all weaknesses times two. So being able to hit them for uh, 140 means you knock them out, at, even if they have an Expert Belt, they're just within range of knockout if you have another uh, Crobat as well. So really powerful to hit Lightning Weakness against Gyarados, because Gyarados is one of the better decks in this format for sure they're also playing one of the luxury gl level x's uh, obviously it's a really good card so 110 hp free retreat uh bright look is the power so once during your turn for your attack when you put luxury level x uh from your hand to your active luxury you may switch the defending pokemon with one of your opponent's bench pokemon so having that control over your opponent's board um is really nice it's another option late in the game if you uh, just need to steal one prize for the game uh and then also it lets you hit stuff for weakness like i was talking before about the guard chomp being able to bring a guard chomp up and then hit it for weakness with your guard chomp you can earthquake to kill the basic guard chomp um so so that is a really po powerful strategy in Mirror. You want to take out Garchomps because those are the um, real powerhouses of any SP deck. So being able to take that out is super important. And then Flash Impact, Lightning Colors does 60, and then you do 30 damage to one of your po Pokemon, um, and then you don't apply Weakness and Resistance. So this is actually, it has some synergy with Garchomp's Healing Breath, right? Because you're damaging your own board. You really don't want to do that. Bronzong also damages itself uh, when you move energy. So then being able to Garchomp C to heal it off. Um, the Flash Impact pings, uh, I will say... If you have the opportunity to put them on something that you're going to poke a turn, that is preferable. Like if, you, if you're going to put them on a bat and you plan to turn the bat next turn, that is obviously the play. Um, but yeah, Flash Impact, super solid for one lightning and an energy gain, you do 60. Just a really, really energy efficient attack. And then you're also playing two uh, Blaziken FB. So this is actually um, kind of a hot like topic in this format. I think that you have to play two Blaziken FB just because of uh, Valgar. So Valgar is one of the... Uh, potential best decks in the format in this format and blaziken fb puts in a ton of work against valgar so valplume has a retreat of three um and it locks trainers so that could be a really big pain for any sp deck especially one that's not playing dialga g level x um like this one but one of the answers that you have to that is a um constant luring flame so blaziken's got 80 hp luring flame is the first attack so for one fire switch to the defending pokemon with one of your opponent's bench pokemon the new defending pokemon is now burned so you get to potentially start to do damage on that uh vile plume and not only are you doing damage it's uh like special condition based damage so that damage if they have a rescue energy it doesn't uh 
because it rescue energy only works if they get knocked out by damage so if you're knocking it out with burn not only they knock the vile plume back in their hand but you're also just constantly dragging it up and you're forcing them to have you know either a warp energy in hand or manually attached to retreat which is really awful for them as well um so yeah luring flame really really solid against vile plume and then vapor kick's kind of not a bad attack as well so for fire colorless um it does 30 if your opponent has any water pokemon to play it does 30 plus 30 so decent against uh gyarados in some situations and then you're also playing one of the Blaziken FB level X. This is mainly a Dialga counter, but it does have uh, some other uses as well. So it one shots Dialga G level X, which is the really nice part. It's got 110 HP, single retreat, uh, burning spirit is the Poke body. So any damage done by attacks uh, to a burn Pokemon, both yours and your opponents, uh, is increased by 40. So being able to go Luring Flame, burn, and then uh, Jet Shoot for a big amount of damage is a really, really cool combo. Uh, and then Jet Shoot for Fire Colorless or Single Fire and an energy gain, it does 80. And then during your opponent's next turn, any damage done to Blaziken FB by attacks is increased by 40. So that is a really important um, side note to keep in mind because it does leave you vulnerable to stuff like Toxicroak G, um, which is something that Dialga can play to kind of counter your Blaziken once they get one shot. Uh, but yeah, Jet Shoot for honestly one for 80 is like really, really good. Energy gain is like such a crazy um, tool in this format for SP that they just got to fulfill the colorless cost. And doing one for 60, one for 80, you know, two for 80 snipe anywhere is just really, really energy efficient attacks that essentially these three guys are going to be powerhousing through your game. You also play uh, an Uxi X line, which can be useful in some matchups, not so much in this format because Gardevoir isn't in this format. Um, but there are some matchups where you want to use Uxi, mostly against other Uxies, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, so Uxie's got 70 HP, single retreat. Uh, and then setup is the power. So setup's a broken power. When you bench Uxie, you can draw until you have seven cards in your hand. Uh, so just amazing draw setup. It's really, really solid. Psychic Restore for one colorless does 20. And then you can put Uxie and all cards attached to the bottom of your deck in any order. Um, so just being able to reuse Uxie with Psychic Restore is actually really nice as well. And they do play one Ux X as well. So Uxie level X, 90 HP, single retreat, trade off is the power. So once you're in your turn, you can look at the top two cards of your deck, take one of them, put it in your hand, and then put the other one to the bottom of your deck. So really solid uh, just mid draw throughout the middle of the game. Just being able to see the top two cards of your deck means you're seeing three cards a turn with your top deck and slowly getting through your deck so trade-off seems like not that big of a deal but actually it is a very big deal and there is a game um that will be released next week where i play against uh trevor playing dialga chomp and the trade-off actually like opens me up to win a game when i did not have that win condition available so tune in for that uh and then zen blade is the attack on this guy so for two colorless it does 60 and then uxi x can't use zen blade during your next turn so Decent damage as well. Honestly, all these guys are pretty decent uh, for their cost. This is just a double colorless energy, or you could bronze on an energy and attach. Uh, but yeah, two for 60, not so bad. And being able to hit that psychic weakness is important in some matchups as well. So this will play a Toxic Rook G, uh, Toxic Rook G, 90 HP, fighting type. Uh, so Leap Away is the power. Once you're in turn for attack of Toxic Rook trees, your active Pokemon, you can flip a coin if heads, uh, put to croak, Toxic Rook and all cards attached back into your hand. So being able to take, you know, the psychic energy, the energy gain that you usually put on it to attack back in the hand is really nice and the best part about it is, is you usually don't even have to put the energy back you can just move it with a bronze song and then it's still on your board which is really really solid and then poison revenge is the attack so the fighting type weakness uh, is super important for luxury but also like i was saying before if you're facing down another blaziken this can also be an answer to a blaziken uh, so poison revenge for a psychic colorless it does 20 if any of your pokemon were knocked out by damage from an attack uh during your opponent's last turn this attack does 20 damage plus 40 more damage and the defending pokemon is now poisoned so being able to hit for, um, you know, it does 60, and then with the Blaziken FB plus 40, it's 100, and then Poison puts it at 110, which knocks out the Blaziken, which is super nice. And then you also just one-shot Luxray automatically, um, even without the Poison. But the Poison can also be nice if you're versus something with a ton of HP that has an ability, because being able to shut off the ability uh, can definitely be decent for sure. And then we're also playing one Crobat. Every SP deck plays one of these guys. Amazing card. So 80 HP, free retreat, flash bites the power. So when you bench Crobat, you can put a ping anywhere on your opponent's board. Just drop a damage counter somewhere on their board. Um, so really great to be finishing off stuff, hitting a little bit more damage. Uh, Uxie's got 90 HP. Garchomp snipes 80. You ping it first for one with a Crobat. Then you can just snipe kill another Uxie X on the bench with a Garchomp, which can be a good play depending on what the board is. Um, and then Toxic Fang is another attack that you can use because you do play Psychic Energy. So Toxic Fang, Psychic Colorless, the defending Pokemon is now poisoned. Put two damage counters on the defending Pokemon instead of one in between. So this actually can be a good attack against Dialga Chomp uh, depending on what your board looks like. If you have to use it, it's not so bad. There are better options like Blaziken, but uh, Toxic Fang, not so bad against a big Garchomp or Dialga as well. You're also playing a Bronzong, so Bronzong G just uh, keeps your energy mobile, 90 HP, metal type, 
Uh, Galactic switches the power on this guy. So once during your turn for your attack, you may move an energy card attached to one of your SP Pokemon to another one of your Pokemon that put two damage counters on Bronzong. So the damage is actually not that big of a deal because Garchomp heals off damage. Um, but being able to move energy is a massive deal. Like I was saying before, you can move the energy off the Toxicroak before taking it back. Or let's say you're attacking with a Luxray, right? You attack with a Luxray, hit for 60, and then since it has free retreat, you have so much mobility in this deck, you can just go free retreat, Garchomp, move the energy on the Luxray to the Garchomp, attach, energy gain, and then all of a sudden you're swinging with the Garchomp. So it just leaves your uh, attackers really mobile and lets you attack with pretty much whatever you want at a lot of points in the game. Uh, and then you don't play metal, so we're not going to talk about the attack. Lucario GL, uh, so 80 HP, fighting type, boundary aura. Apply weakness for each Pokemon, both throws and your opponents as times two instead. So being able to hit that times two weakness on uh, Gyarados is a really big deal. A lot of other Pokemon, honestly, that you hit for weakness, you already hit uh, already. But you need this card for Gyarados. I actually don't think you beat Gyarados without this card. So super, super important tech for Gyarados. And then you're also playing one uh, unknown Q. So Unknown Q is another uh, mobility card. So 30 HP, which is super low, kind of in that donk territory. This is one of the cards that you can get donked uh, with if you start. Free Retreat, which is kind of nice. Uh, quick is the Poke Power. So let's say I have this Lucario active. If I have a Q in my hand, I'm going to bench it, activate Quick. Now, instead of a Pokemon, Unknown Q is a Pokemon tool. I put it onto one of my Pokemon, and then that Pokemon has one less retreat. So now Lucario has Free Retreat, which is super nice. Uh, just being able to keep that mobility option with the Lucario, or uh, Uxie is a really big one too. You put it on the Uxie, and then Uxie X the active, and then retreat it to the bench, because you want to have that trade-off for a lot of turns in the game, if that's a, a possible play that you can do. Um, and then Hidden Power for one, uh, it does 20 as well. So this is actually another potential donk attack. I have seen some crazy things happen with Hidden Power, like Hidden Power, Expert Belt, uh, Bat Drop, KO, and Uxie. There's some there's some crazy plays you can make with Hidden Power, doing one for 20. Or if, you, if you're up against a Magikarp or another Q, you automatically one-shot Unknown Q with Hidden Power, because it does 20, and then it's plus 10 weak to Psychic. So good to keep in mind as well, uh, because a donk is a easy dub. And then you also play one Azelf. Uh, so Azelf's got 70 HP. Uh, time walk is the power on this guy. So when you bench Azelf, you can look at your prize cards, take a Pokemon you find there, and then switch it with a card in your hand. So really great for finding uh, any of your pieces that you're missing. There are a lot of one-ofs in this deck. Uh, this level X, this level X, this level X, and then all of these are one-ofs. So being able to have that option to change something in your prizes with another card in your hand, if you really need a Luxray or a Blaziken in a certain matchup or an Uxie, it kind of depends on what your board is. Uh, but having that option to access Pokemon in your prize cards is actually really good, and this is a staple in a lot of decks in this format. Okay, uh, so getting to the trainer cards, playing four Poketurn, obviously, because Poketurn is broken in any SP deck. Every SP deck should be playing four, and if you're not, get a better list. Um, so Poketurn, return one of Pokemon SP and all cards attached to your hand. So great healing, great switching ability, great to be able to reuse powers. Like, it's just such a good card that's so versatile in every SP deck. And it's it's funny because different SP decks use it differently. Um, but yeah, this is this is a very, very good card. For sure. Uh, one of the really nice parts about Poker Turn, I will say, is it lets you um, reuse your guard chomps two turns in a row with only one card. Like, usually you need to retreat and then Poker Turn have a switch. But what you can do is if you have another Garchomp, you go Garchomp, Poke Turn, take the E gain and the Garchomp X back. And now if, if you have another DCE, you can just promote the other one and then level it up, energy gain, DCE, and use Dragon Rush two turns in a row, which is very, very powerful for sure and uh, can take out a board really easy. Um, speaking of taking out your opponent's board, energy gain really helps with that. So as long as uh, Team Galactic's energy gain is attached to a Pokemon uh, SP, that Pokemon's attacks are one colorless less. So fulfilling the colorless on Luxray, Blaziken, and Garchomp is super important. Also the Crobat and the Toxicroak. It's just a great card. You play four of it because it's useful on every one of your SP Pokemon. Just such a good card that you want to see always. You also play three Power Spray, so this is one of the coolest cards uh, that Pokemon has ever printed. Uh, so you can play this card during your opponent's turn when your opponent's uh, Pokemon uses a Pokemon power. If you have three uh, or more SP Pokemon in play. So if you have three Pokemon SP, you can Power Spray and stop your opponent from using a Setup or a Flash Bite or a Quick or a Time Walk, really whatever they have. Um, but it lets you block their power, which is such a neat card. 
You're also running two SP radars. This is one of your Pokemon searches. Uh, choose a card from your hand, put it on top of your deck, search your deck for a Pokemon SP, show it to your opponent, and put it in your hand. So it finds any of your SPs really great because it's a searchable card by Cyrus. And then it lets you find your basic SPs or your level Xs, which is a super solid part of the card. And then more Pokemon search. You're playing a Pokemon communication as well. You're playing a ton of Pokemon. So being able to uh, have that option to switch a Pokemon with your hand in a po with a Pokemon in your deck is uh, usually really good because you usually have Pokemon in your hand that are not always useful. Um, and then you're also playing one Expert Belt. So this is uh, a card that you just play one of because it can be important to push you over the top on some matchups. Um, and it just essentially gives you 20 more HP and buffs your damage by 20. So being able to hit that 20 more damage can be super important, uh, depending on what your opponent's board looks like, just to hit that 20 more. Also, it's good to save some of your Pokemon. Like, for example, if I have an Azelf on the bench, my opponent's going to win next turn with a Garchomp. I can put an Expert Belt on it and then force him to also have a Bat um, if he wants to KO the uh, Azelf is for game. So kind of a, a cool card. You only play one of them because it's not as useful as it is in Dialga Chomp, but still a super solid card. You also play one uh, Premier Ball. So this is a Pokemon search as well as a retrieval card. So search your deck or discard pile for a Pokemon level X. Show it to your opponent and put it in your hand. And then uh, shuffle your deck afterward if you search your deck. So just being able to search for your level Xs. You play four of them and they're only one ofs. So, uh, you know, SP Redder gets three of them. But uh, Premier Ball can also grab the Uxie X if that's something that you need as well. And it's also great to recover, right? Because you only play the one Luxray and Blaziken. And if that goes down, then you don't have a ton of recovery cards except for this and uh, Aaron's, which we're going to get to in a bit. Uh, but yeah, just being able to have that recovery is really solid as well. And speaking of recovery, you also play one Versus Seeker. Uh, so Versus Seeker, search your discard pile for a supporter card, show it to your opponent and put it in your hand. So great for recovering a supporter. Just so good because a lot of the supporters in this deck are very good. And then uh, with the addition of Junk Arm, um, it just makes your late game super versatile. You have the option to take supporters out of your discard pile um, and then potentially even twice, right? If let's say you want to use a Bertha's, you can use it versus Seeker for Junk Arm for versus Seeker for Bertha's for a third time. And it kind of kind of can throw a wrench in your opponent's plans because they have this idea of what they think you can do. And then when you're recovering resources, it uh, can definitely mix them up a little bit. Okay, so getting into supporter cards, also playing for Cyrus Conspiracy because this card is really good in any SP deck. So Cyrus Conspiracy, search your deck for a supporter card, a basic energy guard, and a trainer card that has Team Galactic's invention and its name. Show them to your opponent and put it in your hand. So a search three with a supporter is a really, really good supporter, especially when it's energy trainer and a supporter for next turn. Like that's just one of the best supporter cards that Pokemon has ever printed. Uh, unfortunately, it's only for SP Pokemon, but still really, really nice in an SP deck. So just being able to get that consistent energy search and trainer search uh, keeps you doing whatever you want to do. You're also playing three Pokemon collector. So Pokemon collector, search your deck for three basic Pokemon, uh, show them to your opponent and put them in your hand. So just great to set up. You just get a Garchomp, a Luxray and something else, Uxie, whatever else you need. Um, but a really, really solid early game. One of the, uh, early grabs with Cyrus Conspiracy, depending on what the hand is. But usually if I don't have a ton of Pokemon set up and if I have another supporter in my hand, I'll go Cyrus Conspiracy for a collector because it is a super important setup card. And they're also playing two Pont or Professor Oak's new theory. Uh, so shuffle your hand to your deck, draw six, just a really basic shuffle draw, but it's a super solid supporter. Shuffle draw six is great and really good for finding double colorless energy because there's nothing else that finds double colorless, en double colorless energy in this deck. Uh, but you can potentially get it off of Pont. Then you're also playing one Bebe Search. So Bebe Search, uh, choose a card from your hand, put it on top of your deck, and then search your deck for a Pokemon, show it to your opponent, put it in your hand. So just great for finding any Pokemon. Uh, there's no restrictions on this card, but it does cost one card from your hand. Uh, but really good just because it finds any Pokemon at any point in the game. And they're also playing one Aaron's Collection. So this is uh, the card I was talking about earlier. It's one of your late game recovery cards. Search your discard pile for up to two in any combination of basic energy and Pokemon SP, uh, show them to your opponent and put them in your hand. So just great for recovering stuff late into the game if your opponent uh, has taken out a Pokemon SP that you need. And then getting into the energy, we're going to be playing four Call Energy. Call is a really solid card in uh, Lux Chomp. So search your, or Call Energy, it's one colorless energy, but if it's attached to your active Pokemon, you can activate it and it ends your turn. So it ends your turn and then you can search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon, show them to your opponent and put them onto your bench, which is great because it means they can level X next turn because you put them onto your bench and then your turn ends. And then when it comes back to you, they can get level X. So they have to be in play for a full turn before they level X, but great, great setup card. Also, one of the great parts about Call is if you have a Power Spray in your hand, you can just go Call, activate Call, search for two Pokemon, then all of a sudden Power Spray is live. And you can potentially lock your opponent out of using Uxie before they even get to play any cards. So really, really good card there in that sense. You're also playing four uh, double colorless energy. So this is mainly to fulfill Garchomp, but also helps fulfill the basic Luxray's attack and Uxie X's attack, uh, if that's something that you need it for as well. But just really good, honestly, super, super good for the Garchomp. One of the best energies for Garchomp, and it makes Garchomp a really, really dangerous powerhouse in any SP deck that uh, 
double colorless energy exists in. Let's bring two lightning energy. Obviously, Lux Chomp is uh, one of your main attackers, and it's just super useful. Uh, the colors of the energy aren't super important because they, you know, Garchomp attacks for colorless. Blaziken only requires one fire, and Luxray only requires one lightning. So you kind of just play the one lightning because Luxray is usually a little bit more useful of an attacker than Blaziken. You do a little less damage, but you also don't take 40 more damage if you attack. So that's kind of why you play the thicker lightning. But you also do play the one fire just for Blaziken. Um, also just a energy if you want to use it on a guard trump or whatever and you also play one psychic energy uh to be able to attack with toxic Grog g and i guess lock up as well if you want to do that so it activates toxic Grog g is the main reason you play it but you can also use toxic fang and lock up if those are uh attacks that you need to use in a game okay well this has uh been blg for the majestic dawn to call of legends format if you have any questions about the deck feel free to leave them in the comments below and i'll do my best to get to them and uh thank you guys so much for tuning in we will see you next time